So I have some students that recently were studying for the FE exam and came across a problem like this where all you have to do is solve for the vertical reactions at A and B. It seems like an easy enough problem, but when you get into the details, it becomes a little bit more challenging. So the first step in any type of statics problem is typically to solve or to draw a free body diagram. So let's do that. And when I draw free body diagrams, I like to redraw the member with the forces and then put in my support reactions that aren't known. And whenever we have a rigid support, we're going to have something that looks like this, where there's a vertical reaction, you know, a horizontal reaction in a moment. And that's going to be the same on both sides. So, you know, we could draw BX this way or, or whichever way. It doesn't really matter because we're not really concerned with BX, but we are concerned with this BY and this AY. But when you get to this and you start to write down your equation, what happens? Well, when we sum moments about point A, just like we normally do when we're solving for reactions, that equals zero. But when we do that, let's take a look. Well, AX and AY, they both pass through point A, so they don't cause a moment at point A. But this 20 kilonewtons doesn't, so that will cause a moment. So we're going to have you know, minus 20 kilonewtons times, well, our distance here is going to be 6 meters, right? And then we're going to have, well, plus BY times 10 meters, but we're not done, right? Because this moment at A and this moment at B, which I still need to label over here, this moment at B, they both cause a moment about point A. So we have to include those in our in our equation here. So what we're gonna do is moment at A, that follows the same sign convention here, this our positive sign convention here. So we're gonna add the moment at A, moment at B goes the opposite direction. So we're gonna subtract the moment at B. So right away you see that there's a problem because we're trying to solve for by, but we also have this moment at A and moment at B that we don't know. They're unknown. They're unknown moments. So when you get to a place like this and I ask you, how do you solve for by? You might say, I don't know. I can't determine it. Right. That's because it's an indeterminate structure. And when you get there, you have to take a step back and think like, okay, what else can we do with an indeterminate structure to get our answer? And there's a couple approaches. One is to look up some values or maybe use a table in a, the FE reference handbook or the structural analysis textbook. And that's where we're going to start here. So let's use that. And then maybe in another video, we'll come back with a different approach. But let's just start with FE reference handbook and take a look at that. So I'm going to copy in a fixed end moment diagram. So that looks like this, right? And when we get that, we know that this fixed end moment at A is really like the moment at A, right? And this fixed end moment at B is really like the moment at B. So now we can go ahead and solve. So the moment at A, what's that? Well, it's P, which is 20 kilonewtons, right, times A. The A value is just the distance from point A to the load, which is six meters, times, well, we have the four meters squared divided by 10 meters squared. The total length is, is A plus B. So when we do that out, we get 19.2 kilonewton meters. And then for MB, we basically do the same thing, but flip it in a few numbers around. So it looks like this. So all I really did was flip where this square goes. And the result I get here is 28.8 kilonewton meters. Okay, so the good news is what we just did is we solved for these two unknowns in this equation. So what that leaves is essentially one equation with one unknown which we can solve, right? So if we plug that in we get the following and then all we have to really do here is solve for by. So we'll put all these you know pieces on the right hand side, we'll leave by on the left hand side. And when we get down to the end of this we get by equal to 12.96 kilonewtons. Okay, so that's our answer, right? We can box that in, we can go and we can look and we can say, well, once we know one, right, we should be able to solve this. So when we come up here, we get our answer, 13 kilonewtons, seven kilonewtons. And honestly, some of these other answers are reasonable answers that are just wrong, right? So you might have said, well, I'll just proportion this. So if 20 kilonewtons, well, six, you know, and four, 60%, 40%, 60% of 20 is what? What's 12, right? This is, that's the wrong approach, this is the wrong answer. Um, the other thing is, if you put your moments in the wrong way, so you, you flipped these signs here, right? So let's say, you know, you did your signs the wrong way, and you had your moment, you know, go this way and, uh, and this way. Well, you'd end up with this answer, which again, is the wrong answer. And sometimes the FE is tricky like that, where they give you bad answers in there. So, you know, don't flip your signs. Don't make those mistakes. Um, don't just do a straight proportion. And hopefully, you know, use use some of these basic principles that we've come across. And this is kind of the fundamentals 
of indeterminate analysis, right? So on the fundamentals of engineering exam, that's kind of what they're going to ask you for. But this is kind of the basic, the basics of indeterminate analysis. You know, you write your, um, you forget your free body diagram. You realize that I can't determine it. There's more something else that I need. You go and find that something else. Either you're using a fixed end moment diagram by assuming a pin, by doing some other analysis technique, and then what you can do is you can take the information you've learned plug it back into your statics equation and get your solution. So I hope that helps. If you have a comment, feel free to drop it below. But otherwise, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.